Hey everybody, welcome back. I just wanted to show you guys a quick unboxing for a male TRT kit through our clinic, Vivo Health Solutions. So we are a performance medicine clinic. We do uh, work with uh, uh, hormone replacement, performance medicine, weight loss, and just overall doing everything we can to get you feeling at your best, whatever that means for you. So uh, we're all about it. So this is an unboxing. This is a male 10 week TRT kit, and this is what it looks like. This is a full kit here. We like to use Hollandale. We have three other pharmacies that we like to use as well, but Hollandale is one of them. Uh, they're based out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. They are FDA approved and certified and completely legit um, for uh, uh, our patients in the United States. So this is, this is uh, the beginning of the unboxing here. We're gonna go ahead and crack it open. Um, so here we go. All right, so you'll see it can be a little intimidating at first. Oh, not all medications are created equal. Yeah, that's, that's the truth. Um, so uh, we're going to separate everything. I'm going to try and work to separate all the stuff uh, first to make more sense. Those are the insulin syringes that, uh, that come in the, in the kit. So that goes to the side. Um, we also have um, a mixing syringe. Okay, that's going to be important. We'll get to that in a second. Um, we have our, um, these are the syringes that we use, the standard syringes that we use for injecting the intramuscular injection of testosterone. So that's, we'll put those syringes. So those are all the syringes to the side, okay? Um, there we go. Now, um, here's our actual medication. This one is anastrozole. Um, so that is our estrogen blocker, our AI. Very important. If, um, and then here we go, here's our testosterone. Okay, this is our testosterone. Uh, so this, uh, this kit in particular comes with two five milliliter vials, um, so 10 milliliters altogether um, of testosterone cypionate 200 milligrams per cc, and you inject half of a cc twice a week for that. Um, the third medication there is called Kispeptin. Now, there's about three different ways to, um, to make sure that your body's natural testicular function isn't shut off by the use of TRT. One of those ways is, is through uh, Kispeptin, Another one is called gonadorelin. Those both are injectables. And the third is called um, enclomiphene. That one is a pill. So if you're with a clinic that doesn't have all of these tools available to them, because I tell you, every, every person, the more I do this, I realize that every person is very, very different. So the more tools we can have to our disposal, we can, um, we can really get the, the most performance out of someone. So, um, so everybody's a little different. Some people respond better to enclomiphene than gonadorelin or what have you. And, uh, and then, you know, the Kispeptin is basically the one at the beginning of the, um, the cascade. So I, I did a whole geek out session on the differences between all of those that you can check out on my YouTube channel, Real Science with Chris Neal. So um, that's it. Those are, those are all the products that come in. And now we're going to go over um, some of the other aspects towards getting things rolling here. So the Kispeptin is a peptide hormone. And like many of the peptide hormones, we are going to have to what's called reconstitute um, the medication to um, make sure it's in a liquid form so that we can inject it. This one's going to be injected sub-Q under the skin twice a week. Um, so uh, it includes like a couple alcohol wipes, your bacteria static water, that's the, the bottle with the purple um, lid, um, and some instructions. So here's some just basic instructions on how to do a sub-Q injection that's uh, not bad, it's uh, pretty good. There's, uh, there's some good YouTube videos on how to do that as well. So um, the, the Kispeptin has the gray lid on top. Um, we'll show that here in a second. Just kind of going over some of the instructions on um, uh, reconstitution and also uh, on uh, doing a sub-Q injection. So we'll put that, that to the side. So this is our um, Kispeptin right on the label. It'll tell us how much <clears throat> bacteriostatic water or diluent, that's what that means, um, mixing uh, solution needs to go inside the powder. So that bacteriostatic water needs to go inside this powder, right? You'll see that's all powder in there. It's dry. Um, so um, once we reconstitute it, it's at its best if you, if you keep it refrigerated, okay? Um, but there is a little bit of a process to the, the, um, the, the mixing. So the instructions state that we need to mix 
five milliliters of diluent into the kiss peptin. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, uh, but we, we need our mixing syringe in order to make that happen. So we'll grab the mixing syringe over here. They give you one giant syringe. It's, it's literally a 10 milliliter syringe with a, with a pretty good sized needle. And, um, and you'll uh, take those, put them together, and basically suck out or draw out five milliliters from your bacteriostatic water and inject it into the, um, the bottle with the powder, with the kispeptin inside, okay? So that's what we're doing now. Um, and uh, now I, I preach this all the time, you can never stay clean enough. So you always wanna make sure you're working on a clean surface, you have your alcohol wipes on hand, you know, and uh, you're, you're ready to go. And that goes for cleaning off the top of the bottles, cleaning your skin before an injection every single time. I personally, like, I don't inject unless I've already, like, well, I, I do my injections after I get out of the shower. So um, just to be extra, extra careful, and I've never had a problem. So here we go, the, um, you pop off the little plastic top and you'll notice a little rubber uh, circle with a little metal ring. You take your alcohol wipe and use wipe over top of that to just double check, make sure it's extra clean. Okay, there is some vacuum pressure in all of these uh, vials. So something that, that you can do, you can actually um, push in five milliliters of air into the bottle. And then you can see what happens when we do that. It will just automatically fill back up. I don't have to draw or anything. It'll just fill back up with the five milliliters of water that we need, um, roughly. So you wanna make sure that's, that's about right. Um, try and get the, the little bubbles out there so you can get an accurate measurement as best as possible. And, um, and then we do the same thing with our kispeptin. We pop the top off the kispeptin, make sure it's really clean, and then go from there. Right now I'm just showing the measurement uh, you want to make sure that the um, that first ring or that first line around the black stopper um, is uh, right at the five milliliters. So that'll, that'll set you up pretty decent. So here we go. We we pop off a little gray top, clean it again with the alcohol just to make sure it's extra extra clean. Um, and um, there we go. There we go. We'll go ahead and. Um, push this in. So now, like I said, vacuum pressure. So it's going to take a little bit of pressure in order to get, um, you know, or actually, I'm sorry, it's actually going to suck in all of this pressure. It's going to suck in the, the bacteriostatic water just on its own pretty quick. There you go. So at this point, um, the uh, kispeptin is very delicate. So we can roll the bottle around to make sure it gets um, to all the powder and it can start diluting all of that. Um, you know, but you don't want to shake it. You just want to slowly roll it around and then just let it sit and it'll all um, it'll all dilute on its own. You know, it works really well. <clears throat> so um, that is that process. So then when we're, when we're ready to do our injection, once it's completely diluted, um, we will um, actually, as far as right now, we're done with the mixing syringe. We can throw that away. Um, so we're done with the bacteriostatic water. We won't need that anymore. This is only done uh, once. So um, that's all trash. So um, uh, let's see, oh, I, was, I mentioned that this label right here, this sticker on the box, that is your prescription or that, that's what has your name and your, your identifying information, everything on it. Um, the, you, it's always best to store everything in those uh, locations like that. Um, it's most important for the testosterone, which happens to be a controlled substance. So that's the one you really want to make sure that you don't throw away those, those paper boxes, you know, because that's your identifying information. So we pick up an insulin syringe. You just take one of those twice a week. You draw up to the 25 on an insulin syringe. Um, so you'll see the units on the syringe, um, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, all the way up to 100. Um, and we're going to go to 25 units, which is the exact same measurement as... 0.25 milliliters or 0.25 cc's, same thing. Um, so we're gonna use this little itty bitty insulin syringe um, and get into the rubber stopper, we already wiped it off, and um, suck in our 25 units of kispeptin. You know, and this is the medication, like I was saying before, that maintains your natural testicular function. 
Um, so that's what this one's for. And like I said, we have we have uh, many different types. Um, HCG is one type, gonadarelin, enclomiphene, and kispeptin. And uh, those are all three completely different tools. They do not do the same thing. Um, but yes, they are different tools. And um, and it's important that if you if you're you're um, entrusting someone to care for you, then that they are aware of the tools that are available and have access to them because you know one tool might be better for you than another. Um, so what I did here, I just injected some air into the container um, because then that just kind of negates the, a lot of the vacuum pressure. So it makes it a little easier to draw out. Um, so I'm kind of holding the plunger, you know, as I keep that measurement at 25 so it doesn't suck in some of the medication that can be kind of annoying you know, at first, but after you've um, done a couple shots, it, it begins to neutralize, so it's not a big deal after a couple weeks. Um, put that to the side. That one's going to go in the refrigerator. That's the only one out of all of these that go in the refrigerator, the, the Kispeptin um, in the little glass vial. <clears throat> so that one's ready to inject. That one's ready to do our shot um, uh, 0.25 or 25 units twice a week on that one. Um, and depending on what kind of protocol you're, you guys are on, sometimes I have patients do that medication more often, um, but uh, we start at 25 twice a week. This medication here is called anastrozole. This is the estrogen blocker. Um, so uh, it's a little itty bitty white pill. It's a little tiny thing. Um, I think I'm going to pull one out and show you. Um, but uh, for most guys, what I've found is most guys taking half of a cc of testosterone need, need to block with the use of half of a pill or half of a milligram of anastrozole. That seems to do the trick for most guys. Now, everybody's very, very different. I, I preach that all the time. Um, so some guys don't need to take an astrazole at all. Some guys need to take double or triple even. You know, it all kind of depends on your machine. And, uh, and we discover what kind of machine you have over time. You know, as we talk and discuss, that's why the consultations are so, so important um, to be able to consult with someone that you know really knows what they're talking about, knows how to utilize these tools to the best of your benefit. Um, uh, a company that just puts everybody on the same thing is not going to be the ticket. Um, so that's the anastrozole. Now we're moving, moving on to the testosterone here. Um, so we'll open that up. It's got the same, the same uh, instructions as um, the, the other with uh, the sub-Q versus intramuscular injection. So same thing. Um, so... Uh, that's that part, and we'll just, um, you can read over those or, or, or just throw them away, um, so, um, because after you get doing this for a couple of weeks, it's just like brushing your teeth, it's very easy, so same thing, we have a, um, a little gray top up here, um, and uh, so you can just pop off the gray top, there's a rubber seal, um, just like before, so we'll make sure that we clean that rubber seal really good, um, sometimes you'll get five milliliter vials. Sometimes you'll get just one 10 milliliter vial, depending on um, a lot of different factors and what the fa what the pharmacy has available. But um, but a standard kit generally comes with 10 milliliters of testosterone sipionate, 200 milligrams per cc. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that top off, clean it with the alcohol wipe, and get my stuff ready for um, my shot. So. The, what we're going to do here, this is a standard syringe. So this is a three milliliter syringe. And it already has um, a pretty big needle already on it. Um, but this smaller needle that I'm pulling off here, this is what I'm actually going to be injecting with, um, which is a 25 gauge. The larger needle that comes on the syringe is actually a 21 gauge. So we're going to leave that on just to give it, um, to help make it a little bit easier to, to um, draw the medication into the syringe. Um, but uh, after that, we just, we, we'll, we'll throw that larger syringe away because we don't want to stick ourselves with a 21 gauge if we can help it. Um, so that's that part. Okay, um, so we clean that off. We go ahead and pop off the, um, the, the, little cap there and always with these lure lock caps that's what they're called these lure lock uh, needles you want to tighten them and make sure they're all tight you know before you start injecting I always just double triple check that um, because the worst thing is that it's just, if you if it gets if it goes loose and it falls off while you're trying to give yourself an injection that's not fun um, so here we go we stick in and um, begin to draw out and you'll see it start to run along the side there 
Um, so we're going to fill it up to the 0.5, okay? And it's important to note that um, the syringe is measured very much like a ruler. Um, if you look at most rulers, the, the very, very edge of the ruler doesn't start at zero. There's a little blank spot, and then there's the zero mark, and then it goes. So the syringe is a lot like that. The little blue area up into the needle is, um, is that empty space. You know, so there is going to be some testosterone in there. And then the first line on your actual syringe, that's your zero mark you know, for measurement. So if you fill up to the 0.5, then you, you have 0.5 plus another 0.12 or so that's filling up the needle cap. So you always want to kind of be cognizant of that. Um, so at this point, what I generally do, I will suck in a little bit of air to push the testosterone out of the needle cap and back into the syringe so there's nothing left over residual in the cap, and I'll throw that one away. Um, the next syringe that's coming up here, um, this one is a 25 gauge. So, um, so now I'm going to push some of the air out of the syringe and that's going to fill the needle cap again. Okay, sorry if you guys can't see that. Um, so, and that, that's, the, that's the idea um, behind that. But, so still, after all of that's said and done, even after you do your injection, um, there's still a slight, there, there can be a little bit of, of loss, you know, just because once you're done with your injection, there still might be a little bit of residual in that needle cap that you're never gonna be able to get out, honestly. Um, and it's just not really worth it. But um, so you just want to kind of be cognizant of that. If you um, actually measure to the 0.4, um, then uh, including the needle cap, you'll get about 0.5 or 0.52 or so. Um, so keep that in mind. Some guys actually do their injections with insulin syringes. You know, and insulin syringes don't have that whole needle cap business for most of them. So um, you don't have to worry about that loss. You know. Um, but uh, we do have um, people doing all their protocols in all different kinds of ways for whatever suits them. But it's always best to get with your medical practitioner and um, uh, hopefully they're one that, can, that will listen to you and, um, and help you formulate something that's going to work best for you. Because like I said, everybody's very, very different and you are worth it. So um, here we go. That, that's, the, that's the syringe. It's all loaded up and ready to go. We want to make sure all the little bubbles and stuff are out of there. And then we can go ahead and do our shot the same way. We just clean everything off with the alcohol wipe. And, um, and that's it. We do our intramuscular shot either in the quad, the glute, or in the deltoid. So um, uh, thank you very much, guys. This is um, the, um, the unboxing of the male TRT kit. Um, and I uh, hope you enjoyed and, uh, and this made some sense. So if you guys have any questions or you would like to um, get with uh, one of our medical practitioners and staff to talk about what this would look like for you or whether you're a good candidate for this, um, then reach us at our website at www.vivohealthsolutions.com. We're here for you. We love this stuff. We live it all that we live it and breathe it all the time. We just we were the biggest geeks in the whole world when it comes to health and fitness and performance, um, and uh, and doing things the right way. So, um, thank you for watching, and uh, uh, please like and comment below, and hopefully we will talk to you soon. Stay healthy.